brothers and sisters, as we remain standing, let us sing the Kenyan national anthem and the Vatican one. Uh, both of them will be done for us, so we just follow in spirit. kindly request you to be seated. And at this point, I would like to invite the father of the college, our VC designate, Father Monia, to come and do the necessary, what you know very well I cannot do in a situation like this one.
Your Excellency Archbishop Hubertus Maria van Megen, the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, and the Permanent Observer of the Holy See to UN, Mr. Kun Balas, Deputy Head of Mission at uh, Hungarian Embassy here in Kenya, Mrs. Alice Mushiri, Coordinator of the Catholic Members of Parliament, University Chancellor, Reverend Father Edward de Tengu, Chair of the University Council, uh, Dr. Moho, Chair of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Odundo, all here present, sponsors here present, members of the Board of Trustees, Chair of the Formation Council, Father Frederick Mukabana, and all formators represented here, Tangaza administration, faculty members, teaching and non-teaching staff, our esteemed students. Good afternoon. God is good and all the time. And that is his nature. So it is my singular honor and privilege to welcome the Apostolic Nuncio Archbishop Ubatus Maria Van Megan to Tangaza as well to welcome and recognize the presence of our visitors from the Hungarian Embassy in Kenya, and indeed to welcome everyone here present to this Eucharistic celebration that concludes the half-day visitation of the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya, uh, to Tangaza. Thank you everyone for being part of this event. In a special way, allow me to recognize uh, Dr. George Muoho, who is here representing the University Council as the chair. Dr. Odundo is here present representing the Board of Trustees as the chair. And Reverend Father Edward Atengu, our uh, chancellor, and representing the sponsors here. Thank you all for being part of this celebration. A very big word of appreciation to our nuncio who chose to spend this day with us. Your Excellency, we cannot take this for granted. We feel greatly honored by your presence here at Tangaza today, right from morning to this hour you are here with us as the representative of the Holy Father in Kenya, as one of the students said during your address to them, your presence here uh, is the presence of the Pope. And it is indeed a source of great encouragement to us, and it makes us feel part of the wider ecclesial community of faith. Your Excellency and uh, our uh, visitors, dear Tangaza Fraternity, Tangaza was founded in 1986 by religious congregations with the intention of giving theological and priestly formation to seminarians from these congregations. Today, Tangaza has grown to a constituent college with three schools, namely the School of Theology being the, May, the, the mother, School of Education and the School of Arts and Social Sciences. Many academic programs are offered in these schools ranging from certificates through bachelor degrees up to PhD. And as such, Tangaza has become a key player in the world of higher education locally and internationally. Here at Tangaza, we operate under the motto, teaching minds, touching hearts, and transforming lives through quality teaching and learning, innovative research, and community outreach for social transformation through gospel values. Tangaza, Your Excellency, has slightly less than 2,500 uh, uh, total students' population drawn from over 40 nationalities. So diversity is our distinctive mark. Your Excellency, the School of Theology is our biggest and the mother school. It has four institutes, the Institute of Theology, Institute of Philosophy, Institute of Spirituality and Religious Formation, an Institute of Islamic Studies and Interreligious Dialogue. The Institute of Theology alone uh, has um, uh, over uh, 600 uh, uh, students, number of seminarians. 
making it the biggest theological institute in Africa. In a survey carried out by the Vatican Congregation for Catholic Education and Culture, today called the Castery for Education and Culture in 2019, that time I was the dean of the school, Tangaza was ranked the best theological institute in Africa and the one with the highest global impact. Each year, the Institute of Theology graduates uh, 120 theologians on average. This number taken over 10 years, this the population has been relatively constant. It means that each year, uh, uh, 100 priest products of Tangaza are ordained, and in 10 years, over 1,000 priests from Tangaza are ordained and this, Your Excellency, are out there impacting transformative change in the church and society. The same can be said about the other two schools and other programs that are offered at Tangaza. By no means, and if there is a challenge mentioned of um, the degrees, the ecclesiastical degrees offered in this school, especially Institute of Philosophy and Theology, not being recognized by the Commission for University Education. That has been a challenge. We have been dealing with it for a long time. And I'm very happy that when I brought it to your attention, Your Excellency, we took it up and we are now in the process of working on it, and soon, as you promised, you told us as lecturers, it is going, the problem is going to be addressed. So that students who graduate in the School of Theology with ecclesiastical degrees uh, are not, are not uh, discriminated when it comes to furthering the education in uh, uh, secular recognized universities or in acquiring jobs. Equally, I want to mention that uh, our apostolic news has also been uh, very much supportive when it comes to us uh, getting a, a charter. Uh, some four weeks ago, when, we, when myself and the administration visited the CS education, he was very happy to mention that uh, even as we come, the apostolic news had already made a mention of Tangaza charter to him and he had promised that he would do his best to make sure we, as Tangaza, transit to the next level of being a fully-fledged university. Thank you, Your Excellency, for that support. <clears throat> Coming to Tangaza, Your Excellency, is a recognition of Tangaza's noble contribution to the church and society, and therefore a sign of hope and a source of encouragement to all of us here. Your address, uh, addresses to the students and the faculty and the members of the School of Theology was uh, very much appreciated and it was seen as a source of inspiration and encourage, encouragement. And thank you again for that. And mine is a promise to you that for us, for all of us here at Tangaza, we are committed and focused in carrying out the mission entrusted to us with love and dedication. We are ready to do everything possible to make Tangaza a real center of excellence and a hub for quality learning and teaching as that is our mandate and mission. I pray and ask everyone and uh, your excellency that we take two special intentions for this mass that we are celebrating now. The first intention, we pray for a successful process of awarding charter to Tangaza. And secondly, we pray for Tangaza to remain faithful to its, uh, to its mission of teaching minds, touching hearts and transforming lives through quality education, <coughs> research and community service. And with these few remarks and words of welcome, I now invite His Excellency the Nuncio uh, to uh, begin the Mass with us and for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Peace be with you, and with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, good to be with you here today. 
as at the beginning of this Holy Mass, we listened first to the national anthem of Kenya and then to the national anthem of the Vatican, I thought it is good that the nuncio is not coming every day because you would have to stand through this anthem every day. <laughs> so now we prepare ourselves for this Holy Eucharist in which we encounter Christ on the designs of bread and wine as he shares with us his body and blood, especially in this Easter time that gets a very special significance for all of us. He who comes to us in his glorified body, he who appears to us under the signs of bread and wine, who wants to remain with us, wants to be close with us, wants to have communion with us. As we prepare to celebrate that great mystery, incomprehensible in many ways, we acknowledge our lack of preparedness, our lack of commitment, our lack of love, and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery and the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that, we, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may also express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, as Peter and John were speaking to the people, after the, land, after the lame man was ill, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came, came upon them. They were annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them. And they put them in custody the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem. With Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of high priestly family, and when they had set them in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a cripple, by what means this man has been healed, be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man is standing before you well. This is the stone which was rejected by the builders, but which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Responsorial psalm, and the response is, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. 
said, has become the cornerstone, which the builders rejected has become the that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter Thomas called the twin Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just as a day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was, this, it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in for the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard, what it was, uh, that it was the Lord. He put on his clothes, for he was stripped for work, and sprang into the sea, but the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out of, on land, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish lying on it and bread, Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went abroad and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although they were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have a breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. So I put my mitre on that warms the brain and gives me more importance. At the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Tiberias, as John calls it. By the way, no Jew normally would call it Sea of Tiberias, because Tiberias was typically a Roman town where normally the Jews would not come. But there they were. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymos, or the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and then there were the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. Remember how it had been said to the disciples, go up to Galilee and there 
you will meet him. There you will meet the Lord. But in one way or another, it must have taken time. And Peter went back to his old business. Maybe he still had his boat even. And went out fishing. By that boat, by the way, was not a small boat. It was not a rowing boat. It was a big boat, a fishing boat. Imagine, the fish of the Sea of Galilee was sold all the way to Rome. That was a real fish industry there at the lake. And by the way, most of the fish would end up on the fish market in Magdalene, the city which is next doors to Capernaum, where Jesus most of the time stayed. Remember, Mary of Magdalene. She came from that particular city. But Simon Peter, it seems, lost patience. Or maybe, maybe he didn't even believe in it anymore. Could you blame him? This whole story about the resurrection, an empty tomb, some strange appearances, some women that came to talk. Would you believe it all? So Simon wants to go fishing. And Thomas, Didymus, Nathan of Ghana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples go with him. It is a bit of a mixed bag there. Yes, Peter, he knew how to fish. Probably was from a fishing family. His father, a fisher, his grandfather, a fisher, and maybe even his mother from a fisher's family. And then also the sons of Zebedee. Also they came from Bethsaida, that same town. Bethsaida, which means, by the way, as much as the house of fish, a typical fisher's town, a little town there on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And if you're ever going to visit the Holy Land, you can still visit that town even today, or at least the excavations of that particular town. But then, once again, Thomas, Didymus, Nathanael of Cana, and probably also the other two disciples, they had no clue about fishing. They were just stepping in the boat with Peter, thought, we have nothing to do, let's just go with him. So they went out, got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. It reminds me a bit of my studies at the university. Sometimes you would study very hard, you sit for the exam, and you barely pass. Basically, it was a night without results. Or maybe I had just studied through the night and was not clear enough in my mind when I got to the exam. But sometimes, yes, it happens in your life that you're fishing, you're practicing, you're trying, you're working hard, but nothing comes out of it. You're without fruits. And just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood there on the beach. Children, have you any fish? He called. And they answered him, no, 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 no. But then Jesus says, cast out the net on the right side and you will find some. So they cast it out and now there were so many. And the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. The disciple who Jesus loved is, of course, John himself, one of the sons of Zebedee. And maybe that Peter, he was already a bit older. You might imagine that Peter must have been at least of the age of Jesus himself. 34, 35, maybe even older, 37. While well, John was young, very young. Most probably 15, 16 years old. Still a boy in many ways. And therefore also that John had this very special relationship with Jesus probably saw Jesus in many ways as his father, the one who would protect him, the one who would take him by the hand, the one on whose chest he could listen, as we heard at the story of the Last Supper, where John was immediately next to Jesus, had, his, had a position of preference there. Jesus and John 
had a special connection. And maybe also it is therefore that John, but also because of his younger ears and maybe sharper eyes, had seen already, yes, this must be Jesus. But Simon Peter, he runs. He puts on his clothes, springs into the sea, and he runs to Jesus. You can imagine, still 100 yards. I had to look it up. I'm from a metric system. 100 yards, 90 meters, running through the water, pushing, getting there to Jesus as quickly as possible. A bit as, remember how it went when Peter and John went for the first time to the tomb. Also there, both were running. John had arrived first, but he lets Peter go in first into the tomb. And also here, it is Peter at the end who is the first one to come onto the shore. And he meets Jesus, even just a bit before the others. And when they got onto the land, they saw that a charcoal fire was burning there already, with fish lying on it and bread. I was fascinated by that thought. Jesus is making breakfast. He's the one who takes care of it. He's the one who made the fire. He's the one already who had the fish. Maybe he's the one who bought the bread somewhere. And he has prepared everything. While the disciples were still on the water, maybe struggling, maybe still in darkness, covered by the morning fog, Jesus was already there on the shore, <laughs> fanning, fanning the fire, making the charcoal red hot, putting the fish. And you can imagine how the disciples who could already smell the fish as they were still in the boat, as the smell of the fish was going over the water towards them, their noses were following it. And by the way, Jesus, he liked fish. You see that a number of times in the gospel. It's always, and he asked for it particularly. He asked of it particularly in one of the uh, stories of apparition. Give me some fish, he says. He could have asked for namachoma or whatever. No, he asked particularly for broiled fish. Nothing else. You want to make Jesus happy? Get him broiled fish. Jesus was a typical Galilean who grew up around the lake, grew up with fish. For him, it was a homecoming as well. He was getting home to his own place there. That's where he had been for many years, together with Peter and the others. Fish was lying on it, on the, on, the, on the charcoal fire, already red, already baked, and the bread. You can bring some of your own fish too, Jesus says. So to say, he wants that you participate. It's like when you organize a party, everybody, everybody brings something. Some bring a bottle of Coke, another bottle of whiskey, and the, the disciples brought some more fish. It's all on there. Basically, you might even ask yourself, what would you bring there? And what do you have to bring? What could you put on the fire to have a meal with Jesus? So they have this meal together. Come and have breakfast, Jesus invites. It's a bit like the Last Supper, where also he invites, and he even washes the feet of his disciples. So here again, come and have breakfast with me. And Jesus came and took the bread and broke it and gave it to them and so with the fish. Last supper in a sense all over again. Again the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist, or even like the Emmaus, disciples of Emmaus. So they also, they recognized him in the breaking of the bread every time again, so also here. A beautiful story. The story of Christ there at the lake, of Christ who serves, servant leadership. That's what it is all about. That is what the church should be about. It's not about lording it over them, as Jesus had said during his life. 
but it's about putting the apron on, going on your knees, preparing dinner, preparing last supper, preparing breakfast, giving yourself. Ich dos, the fish, sign of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior himself. So also we, today, we run like Simon Peter, quickly through the water, and the water might resist, and yes, it is early morning, and it still might be cold, but we want to get there, want to be with him, and maybe the elements are against us, and time is against us, and we have our failures, and the, dark, the night is dark, and maybe we have very poor fish to offer, but we still bring it to him here today on this altar, this breakfast for us, where he breaks the fast with us, wants us to eat with him. Let us then prepare ourselves for that great event. Bring whatever we have, and maybe we think it is very little, like at the multiplication of bread. What was it again? Five bread, two fish, but what is that for so many people? And also you might think, what do I have to offer? It's all nothing. But even with a little bit we ha we, he ha you have, Jesus be happy. He will put it on the fire with the fish that he has in order that we have a good breakfast together. Come and eat because the Lord is good. Amen. And eat. It has come at the right time since it is almost lunch hour. Let us stand and offer our prayers of intercession. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that He who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of His beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the clergy, that nothing may stop them from bringing God's word to the people, for this we pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. That we may not only recognize Jesus in the breaking of bread, but also every event of life, for this we pray to the Lord. That through our lives and actions, we may proclaim Jesus to all. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. That more and more young people may desire to offer their lives and live for Jesus and work in his vineyard. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. That we may never lose our faith and trust in Jesus, but always have patience and hope in him and his word. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord graciously hear us. For Tangaza Fraternity and their families, God may continue enlightening them and protecting them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord graciously hear us. For all the faithful departed members of Tangaza family and all the departed soul that they may all enjoy the joy of resurrection. For this we pray to the Lord. O oh God, who know, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and to need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive, receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
we will have um, of a tree procession. Today we will not have any monetary uh, giving, but of course next next Thursday during our college mass you come prepared. Okay, so those the the dancers and the rest, please prepare yourself. You bring the we are the the, the ones who are bringing the offertories are the members of staff, Tangaza staff. So please.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray the solemn exchange brought about by these Paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And in your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We live to Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim.
Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Irene pum bola imani Cristo ale kofa Cristo ale kufoka Cristo ata kucha tena Therefore Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to, will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercessions, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, and once the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Philip Archbishop, David Kamau is auxiliary, Archbishop Van Megan here present, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, 
and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you as Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
so for the Holy Communion, I will I ask kindly the, the priest to come over and uh, uh, receive from the altar, and those of you who are there. The rest of us priests will get closer to where you are, and from there you will see, you know, you will approach the minister for Holy Communion. Okay, thank you.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, all protocols observed, good afternoon. Because we do not have much time, so I want to take this chance to invite our friends and partners from the Embassy of Hungary to say a word, then we proceed from there. I will give you the way forward. Thank you. I guess I'm a bit tall, so. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is a joyful day for you and for us as well. For you, because this project has been finalized and the new annex can be opened today. And for us, because we can be part of it by our contribution. And I'm glad... <laughs> and I'm glad we can be happy together. Tangaz University College received a donation of 37 million Hungarian forint, which is 14 million Kenyan shilling, via the Hungary Help Program in 2020 when the project started. This donation was intended to support the establishment of a new faculty of agriculture. But this money means more, much more than financial contribution. The most important things in life cannot be measured in money. This new location will host training sessions. The purpose of the trainings is to prepare members of local communities to deal with extreme challenges of their everyday life so that they become capable in their own communities to play an active role in resolving various conflicts through interreligious dialogue. The value of this cannot be measured in money. In Kenya, the de defining part of the economy revolves around food production, which is sourced mainly locally. That is why supporting an agricultural project was an obvious decision from our side. We consider it particularly important to educate the people on the new agricultural techniques and practices that are economically viable and ensure food security in line with Kenya's vision 2030. And the value of this cannot be measured in money. These beautiful new buildings, the new annex, is built of bricks, mortar and cement and so on. Well, I'm not an architectural expert, so I don't know exactly of what, but right now it is only an empty frame. A beautiful frame, but an empty one. The spiritual content that fills all of this will give its real power. And we are happy and grateful to be a part of this. Thank you on behalf of the Embassy, and thank you on behalf of Hungary. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Um, I had more elaborate uh, vote of thanks, but we don't have the time for that. So what we are going to do is to make you realize that the annex, the neuro annex we are opening today and uh, His Excellency is going to bless, has been financed 65% by a donation from Hungary Helps Agency, which is an agency of the government of Hungary, and that's why we are telling our partners from the embassy, thank you very much. Pass our regards, pass our regards to His Excellency the Ambassador. Uh, he has been very kind to us. As a gesture of appreciation, we have named the lower lecture hall of the Nuru Annex uh, 
uh, St. Elizabeth of Hungary. So, uh, that's a, thank you very much. So, you have to appreciate and for and for us today. I want to recognize a few other people. Uh, I can see the chair of BOT and the chair of the council present. Could you kindly stand up and wave to the people so that they may, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Dr. Ondudo and Dr. Muhoho. Of course, our chancellor is here with us. for the Thank you very much. For I can see a number of partners that we worked with in the Nuru Annex project. The, the consultants, I can see the QS, John Gaiko. Is there anyone from, uh, uh, from uh, the Architect Farm, Trioscope? Uh, I can see them at the back. Thank you very much. Um, the project was being done by 3N International. Do we have any representative from 3N International? Okay. So, in short, let me say we are very grateful to everyone and thank you for being here and thank you for the part you have played in making this day a success, all the way from formators, our very dear students, faculty members, our VC designate, thank you very, very much. Now, um, right after the final blessing, we will be going to bless and open the annex by His Excellency the Nuncio. And because we cannot feed there all of us, may I ask um, uh, if our visitors from Hungary have, have left, it's okay. Uh, the sponsors and formators, uh, members of BOT and the council management board, deans and directors, TANSA executive, the leadership of the students, um, the choir, let them represent all of us um, going to the annex, and uh, we shall be well. Now, okay, before we finish, we have a gift for His Excellency the Nuncio. Uh, may I call Sister Margaret uh, Mutiso of CLM to come and present the gift to His Excellency the Nuncio. Thank you. So now uh, the, the, the nuncio is going to uh, end the, the mass with the blessing as usual. And then after that, we will all, uh, uh, it is unfortunate, of course, we would have loved so much to offer you a very sumptuous lunch. But you know very well that this, we are in, yeah, okay? <laughs> but not the same. Yes. Okay. And of course, last but not least, I, I, am, I feel, you know, that uh, my brother Dominican should have uh, acknowledged the presence of Kapush, Kapushin TV. Yes. Yes. Kapushin TV. Because those of us who have never appeared on the screen of a TV, today you have been seen and you'll be told by your friends, ah, oh, we saw you on Kapushin TV. So thank you so much and Capuchin TV as is at the service of the church. Uh, sorry, we had uh, forgotten something which is very crucial, this prayer. Oh, as you stand, that one I have finished. Okay. You see all along, our, our search for charter has been human-driven. 
But now, the VC requested me that now, since we are almost there, we involve divine intervention, okay? So let us stand and recite the Tangaza prayer, okay? And then after these blessings and uh, then the rest, okay? Tangaza prayer, it is projected there. Loving and all. As we thank you for the... Being, we come before you with the offering of the fruits of these years, the graduates now serving your church and people everywhere in the world where they are needed, the programs that have continued to evolve to respond to the challenges of our changing times. And now as you invite us to still greater commitment to be an institution of disciples at the service of the good news for your people. Make us be good news to the many young people whose minds you want to teach, whose hearts you want to touch, and whose lives you want to transform as you call us to become a university after your own heart. Take us by the hand and lead us, the Tangaza family, step by step, to all that you want us to be for your glory and for the coming of your kingdom in our world today. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our teacher and Lord. Amen. Our Lady of Africa, Blessed Irene and Lenaola and Venerable Maurice Cardinal Otunga, all the saints and blessed of Africa, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnities and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he restore you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, endow you with the prize of immortality. And now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in his spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended, go in peace, alleluia. Alleluia.
blessed and opened by His Excellency, Archbishop Tobacco Matthews Maria Van Nelen, the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan on 5th April 2024. Okay, now, Your Excellency, you could cut the ribbon, and that marks the official opening of the Nuru Alex. Wow! Your Excellency, you could open the door of the Alex for us. Wow! Nuru Navigalegele.